OK, boys and girls, sports fans, it's Dan here, and I'm in the bowels of some building in London somewhere with Tony Reynolds. You're the CEO of Reynolds Food something. Well, Reynolds, Reynolds Catering Supplies. Limited. Reynolds Catering yeah. Supplies. You're using a very specific system, M3, uh, to solve very specific problems, one of which is that you have to run on razor-thin margins, yeah. you have very demanding customers, and you have very short shelf life goods that you're, you're selling, okay? Absolutely. But you've been changing your system such that you're able to uh, get your customers to behave a little bit more responsibly is how I prefer to think about it. But you tell, tell us what that's about. Well, it's really about making sure that we've done everything we can mm -hmm. to give our customers the very best options on the service and quality. So if you go back to my granddad's day, there was obviously always a very, very upfront way of trading. Now we want to continue that upfrontness, but because of the amount of transactions that go through our business and because of the way it's expand, expanded, we now have to be able to support that with credible data. And that's really where we're seeing phenomenal benefit with using M3 to be able to go back to our customers in a very professional way and make them aware of the stock position, the quality, the shelf life, any way that we want to dissect information now, we can show it very clearly, very transparently. Mm. So that gives them total confidence in what we're doing, but actually puts more emphasis on them to, act to, to get their act right in forecasting and getting the right data or the right information through to us. Mm. So we can buy the product and deliver it to them in the freshest state. That's a tough, that's a tough ask, isn't it? It is, and, and what's happened is because we've been on this journey with M3 for the last two years. You know, we're now confident that the data warehouse is providing the consistency of information and the customers are buying into that now. Mm. They are seeing that very, very clearly and because we, kept, we keep going back and we keep showing them, it's actually improving their position because they trust the data and we're able to give them more options on their stock availability and, most importantly, the quality of what we're doing. Mm. If I want to be the best greengrocer, mm. you know, I need to be the best at logistics, I need to be the best at finance, I need to be the best at innovation. And we need the best systems mm. to power our business forward. Mm. So, you know, for us to find M3, M4 as a, as a partner uh, has been critical to not only where we are at the moment, right. but where we want to be over the next five years or so. Moving swiftly on, boys and girls, we have Richard Calder. He is the head of business systems. You're the guy that makes the big decisions and spends the big bucks on technology. Is that right? Lots of bucks, yes. Definitely. Lots of bucks. Yeah. Okay, fine. What is it that you're looking to solve, and how difficult are those problems to, to overcome these days? Uh, what we're finding is, as I think as, as, as Tony was, was alluding to, is it, customer demands are becoming more mm. more complex than mm. logistical models that we have to cope with are becoming more complex and to be fair M3 since go live two years ago has coped very well with the vast majority right. of them um, but as they become more difficult we believe there will come a time when we need to be perhaps looking elsewhere and there are elements within M3 that perhaps aren't as good as may maybe they could be mm. and so where we're, where we're looking now in terms of supply chain management or warehouse management in terms of slot efficiency, etc., is that's the areas that we want to be able to concentrate on so that we can get the best out of our distribution facility mm. and be more efficient mm -hmm. in a very competitive market, as, as okay. Tony said. Before we got onto the uh, on camera here, we, we were discussing sensor technology, and uh, this is an in area that uh, colleagues of mine find very interesting because they say sensors they're the they're the future machine talking to machine. But you found that that's quite difficult, haven't you? We did with with RFID. We a couple of years ago, but we there was a lot of buzz about it. Mm. We supply out in the region of about fifty thousand plastic crates each week. Um, strangely enough they're pretty difficult to control and also they're expensive. So we were looking for a solution for, um, we, we looked at barcoding, barcode readers, um, but we also looked at RFID, the possibility of actually mm. embedding them mm. within the crate itself. But we, we're in a very, very harsh environment and we tried with several companies mm. to get proof of concept whereby we could use sensors and use gateways so that we could scan in 
mm. these plastic crates, these you know, they're valuable assets, mm. but it just didn't it didn't work, and it was more to do with the environmental factors of being in the food industry and having a large chilled warehouse, lots of liquid, lots of metal, lots of interference. Mm. And those factors, unfortunately... They still haven't been overcome yet. They haven't been overcome yet. Right. And obviously we've been implementing uh, in M3 over the sure. past years, so we've had our m minds slightly elsewhere. But it's, it's something that, look, should the solution come up, we'll look at again, because mm -hmm. they are extremely expensive assets. It's not just us. I mean, Everybody's in, got the, in same the milk problem. industry, it's, it's cages yeah. and, and dolas. It, it's, it's all over a food industry. Okay. So lots of inefficiency still to drive out, yeah? Absolutely, right. and I mean, also in terms of picking, I mean, uh, we're looking at currently we use handhelds, we use mm -hmm. mo uh, Motorola handhelds. We want to be looking at voice. We want to be looking at voice picking, and that's one of the things that supply chain management from Infor right. actually have been doing doing some work on. Mm -hmm. Our pickers would be more efficient with hands-free, mm -hmm. and whether there's a good return on investment on there, that's something that we've got to investigate.